Hello, my name is Tracy Brandenburg, and I am the director of the Pepper Family Center for Conservation Education. Today, what I'd like to do is invite you to learn a little bit about one of the most beneficial as well as beautiful organisms found here on the grounds of Max McGraw. I'm referring to trees. Trees not only give us things like oxygen, paper products, shade, and of course, maple syrup, but here at Max McGraw, we also rely heavily on forested habitats for the sport of deer hunting, as well as many other homes for other type of wildlife. This is a bur oak, and like all trees, can be identified by its bark, leaves, and seeds. This particular tree has a seed known as an acorn, but the acorn looks quite different from other types of uh, oak trees. It's fuzzy on the outside, and it almost looks like it has a little coat on. Their bark is also very unique. It has these big furrows that is quite bumpy. Um, and that is one of the best characteristics in identification. Another thing you can look at, which is unique for them, are their branches. Their branches are very scattered and have crooks and bends in them and reminds me of a Halloween tree. In addition to the identification of these particular trees, they are also known to be very durable and most commonly used for wood to make furniture. The Native Americans use the bur oaks to treat things like heart ailments, broken bones, and as an astringent for very severe wounds. Several of these oaks have been here since pre-settlement times, which means they are extremely old. Let's see if we can get an age. Now what we have over here is something called a DBH tape, which basically stands for diameter at breast height. What we do is we get a number, and that number is then multiplied by a tree factor that we get from a forester. We can then get an estimated age, and when I say estimated, I mean this is the only way that we can do it without cutting the tree down. So if we go ahead and measure it and we see on the side that it's measured at 108 and the tree factor of a bur oak is 2.5, we then come to the conclusion that this particular tree is 270 years. Very impressive. Hi, I'm Colleen with Education. And as Tracy mentioned, one of the ways to identify trees is with their bark. The shaggy bark of this tree should make it very easy to remember its name. This is the shag bark hickory. Like all trees, it provides us with shade and lumber and oxygen, but you may be more familiar with it with its contribution to your cookout. If you've ever had hickory smoked meats or cheeses, this is one of the species of trees that provides that flavor. In addition to all the benefits to humans, trees like this are very beneficial to wildlife. This tree especially has some unique inhabitants. Not only can birds and squirrels make nests in its branches, but its shaggy bark can also offer shelter. There are many insects that can live up under here, but one of the most unique animals that will live here is a mammal that is native to Illinois, the little brown bat. Most people think of bats as living in caves, but there's no caves in northern Illinois. So instead, these helpful little insectivores can find shelter in plants like this shagbark hickory. When the little brown bat spreads its wings, it's about as large as my forearm. But when it folds its wings around its body, it's only about as big as my thumb, which makes it perfect for fitting up under this bark. That way he can hang out during the day and wait for the evening time when all those mosquitoes come out. Another point I want to make about a tree like this, and other trees that look like this, is when you see a tree whose bark seems to be falling off, it's important that, that we not pull the bark off of that tree. The bark of the tree is like the skin of the tree, and it protects all of its living tissues underneath. If we pull that bark off, it can cause an injury to that tree, which can lead to infection and destruction. The tree will let go of its bark when it's ready to, but only the tree knows the right time to do that. The sugar maple tree 
holds a special place in the heart of McGraw. We're out here in the middle of our sugar bush, which has at least 500 mature sugar maple trees. These trees grow tall and narrow with a fairly smooth bark. The easiest way to identify a maple tree is by its leaves and seeds. The sugar maple has a distinctive five-pointed shape, like the digits of your hand. And you can think of the Canadian flag. While different species of maple trees have different shaped leaves, the one thing they pretty much all have in common is their seeds. The seeds of maple trees are pretty easy to identify. Most of us played with these when we were kids. We usually know them as helicopters because when you throw them in the air, they spin as they fall like the blades of a helicopter. The obvious use of maple trees is to make maple syrup, but maple trees are important for other reasons. The wood can also be used to smoke foods like the hickory, but the wood of the maple tree is ideally suited for making musical instruments such as violins, violas, and cellos. It's also often used for the neck of guitars. Because of the denseness of its wood, the sound travels through it very well. It's also the wood of choice for bowling pins and the surface of bowling lanes because it's lightweight and very durable. Here are some things that are made from wood and you might be surprised by some of the products on this list. We hope to see you out here again soon and stay well.